last lap. There's Wallace in front. And on the outside, Dale Jarrett's number 32 gets collected. Bodine goes into the wall, and it sets up an incredible run to the flag. When they came to the line, notice Wallace in front of the white car, but down to the bottom, it's Darrell Waltrip inching out to win by three feet. That is his fifth win in this Grand National 300. There you see him in victory lane. Yeah, I'm pretty fast. Jeb's faster, though. Hey, Jeb, these guys say that you're the fastest on a razor. Is that true? I guess. How come you're so quick on one of those things? I just know how to drive them. Ah, how'd you learn how to drive them? From my dad. All right. Let's go to your dad with Matt Yoakum. Can you do the throw for me? Let's go to Ward with Matt. Can you do that? Let's go to Ward for Mott. <laughs> And the 50 car is carrying one of the tires from the tire barrier. He's driving the car, isn't he? Yeah, mm -hmm. he's moving. Brought him a souvenir from that spot up there. If the track were wet, uh, <laughs> that tire back there would aid in the drawing of the track. You see that so many times on the short track. Oh, it finally left. Yeah. Okay, here they are going down the back stretch into turn three. Earnhardt in the black yellow Chevrolet number three, trying to dip on the inside of Jeff Bodine. Here's Morgan Shepard coming up in car number 75, and all of a sudden, the car just veers into the wall, hits it very hard, then collects the car number 11 of Terry Labonte, and the wheel, the right rear wheel of Terry Labonte's car bouncing down the racetrack. By the way, that tire continued down on into turn number one, but it did not hit everybody. And this is what our live shot looked like, and that's uh, from our speed shot right under the starter stand. Joy was waving his hand, and Hermie apparently didn't see what was happening up ahead of him, and I think he ran into Chad Little, and that's what caused Hermie to spin back there. Well, Chad Little actually plowed a hole in that crash, and it cost him his right rear tire and wheel, and actually the right rear tire and wheel is what hit the front of LaJoy's car. It was right behind Chad Little. And as I said, there's a big curb at the apex of that corner. You can't see it from that angle, and he might have just got on that curb, and that might have started that truck on a bit of a wiggle. And once it gets out of control coming down that hill, you got your hands full. Styrofoam and the tires do their job. We can tell you Kevin is okay. The truck is not. I believe a lazy, inebriated orangutan could run two laps around this place. Really? And be successful in qualifying. But then you put all those cars out there together and glop them up, and uh, it only the finest tuned, highly trained athlete can be successful. So, But he perhaps is thinking more about winning the race than winning the $10,000 being the leader at the halfway point. Indeed, the number seven car. Oh! And he has overshot the pit entrance almost and had to really slam on the brakes and slide sideways. Here comes Alan Kowicki for the pit stop. Now there is Chase. You see Chase gets hit from behind. He's trying to control the truck. He's completely out of control now. Watch it as it goes to the inside, hits that barrier, goes airborne. He did a lot of damage to the left front of that truck, Mike. <laughs> I see the... 17 car Matt Kenseth gets together with Purvis and just turn those cars directly up into the path of the 57 car of Jason Keller and Tony Stewart. And then all of a sudden when he gets hit, you sit right here. Now watch the steering wheel. He's got a hold of the steering wheel. He's got it again. And he just turns loose of it. Watch it just go back and forth. It just spins. He almost reaches back in there. I mean, that's really dangerous to let go of the steering wheel because that thing's spinning around like that. You put your hand in there, it'll break the it'll thing. It'll break it. That's exactly right. And that's what I say. But he just turns loose of it and lets it spin. But I'm worried about Daryl. Why? Well, we did a Stuart Marchman dinner, uh, a charity dinner the other night. And I was watching Daryl eat. And I'm afraid, I was talking about this with Stevie, and I was afraid that, you know, he had to wear this really baggy shirt and he couldn't tuck it in because I don't think he wanted to show us his belly. And I think when he's not doing anything, I think he's going to eat a lot. Worried. So I'm a little bit worried about Daryl. So Stevie, watch Daryl's diet while he's off for the next six you tell months. Him, you tell him Please. he should be worried about me. He might not uh, be able to get in that new driver's suit. Yeah, th he because the heavier be I am, the harder him. I'm going to pounce on him. Well, wait, see, <laughs> here, he said the heavier he is, the harder he's going to pounce on you. Yeah, listen to this. We were going we were going to auction off the T-shirt that Daryl wore. So I said, I'll throw in the front window out of my truck that I ran at Martinsville. It comes with, you know, all the rubber and the divots and everything still. And I said, the only thing it doesn't have is a rock divot from Daryl Walter because he was always behind me. I said, I'd sell the back bumper too, but he never got close enough to it either. 